Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's great to be back with uh, you, Celebrating Act 2 audience. We love you. And we love Dr. Liz Lister, MD. Uh, and Dr. so Liz, we've, got our, we, we've got our audience. We've got our Dr. Liz Lister. And we've got one of my favorite all-time partners, John Coleman. Hey, talk about love. What a love fest. I'm, I'm there today. I really am. <laughs> uh, Dr. Liz, last time, uh, one of our videos recently, we talked about the thyroid. Mm. And it was, for me, particularly, a fascinating uh, discussion about the thyroid. I was amazed at all the things it affects. Um, but at the end of that video, you mentioned a very specific uh, what version, uh, uh, kind of a rare version of hypothyroidism called Hashimoto's thyroidism. Uh, did I have that right, thyroiditis? Very close. That's it. That's it. You got it. Hashimoto's yeah. so, thyroiditis. So you, you hinted at it, uh, but we didn't get any details. Tell us about this. Now, I know it's not the most common variant of thyroidism, but right. let's talk about it. I think it's important. Absolutely. Yeah, you bet. And last, the other video we did was great because we gave kind of more basic information. The TSH is the thyroid stimulating hormone. It's the main test that doctors use to check for low thyroid function. And it's an opposite relationship because it's a feedback loop. So yeah. a high TSH goes with low thyroid function. Okay, now, unfortunately, nowadays, a lot of doctors only check the TSH. And the TSH can look okay. It can be in the normal range, as I like to say in quotations, even in the presence of this particular subset of hypothyroidism. And it falls, it's, it's a cross with another category of illnesses, which we refer to as autoimmune disorders. Right. which a lot of people suffer as time goes by and we get older. And autoimmune disorders is where our body makes antibodies against itself, right? Not the idea. Antib our, our antibodies are supposed to fight off outside threats, not attack our own tissues. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis is only diagnosed, number one, if the doctor thinks about it and checks the right tests, which I'll say in a moment, and or as we often talk about, and I always talk about, is the tail wagging the dog. Is people watching these videos, educating themselves, and asking their doctor to check for something like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Right. Yeah, so there, it refers to an inflammation, the itis is inflammation of the thyroid, which sits right here. And so sometimes it feels tender, sometimes people feel discomfort swallowing. That could be signs or symptoms of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The tests that can be done, there are two anti-thyroid antibody tests that we have. I'll say them the way that I know them, and you'll be able to find these by looking them up on the internet, even though sometimes they're phrased a little bit differently. One of them is called, its abbreviation is TPO, Thyroid peroxidase, that's what that stands for. TPO is one of the antibodies we can check for. And the other one is anti-thyroglobulin antibody, or its abbreviation is usually ATA. Those are the two anti-thyroid antibodies that we have tests for. There are others. So even if those tests are negative and you're having signs or symptoms that we were just talking about of low thyroid, hypothyroidism, it still could be Hashimoto's. But the classic way to diagnose it is with those tests being positive and possibly other evidence of autoimmune issues going on with your health. Does, uh, I'm sorry, does the Hashimoto's, because it is a different variant. Yes. Um, does Hashimoto's present itself as as anything other than typical uh, thyroidism? Usually it's hypothyroid symptoms, fatigue, weight gain, muscle weakness, irregular periods in women before menopause, brain fog. Those are the classic symptoms. So uh, totally overlapping with hypothyroid 
symptoms and hypothyroidism. That is and the what would make way. somebody think that they should explore far enough, go through testing to see mm -hmm. if it is Hashimoto's. Excellent. So for one, I would say if you're having low thyroid symptoms and your TSH is in the normal range, you want to advocate for yourself and ask for more testing and be tested for antithyroid antibodies. Another is if you have food sensitivities, people who are aware that they're sensitive to gluten or eggs or some of the other common ones, soy, all right, those are the common overlapping sensitivities. And that is usually going to have an immune component, same as what we're talking about here with an autoimmune low thyroid, which is the Hashimoto's. Good. That See, now that I think is important because it sounds to me like Hashimoto's is not obvious, not you, people don't even think about it. It's almost a Correct. hidden something and you have to know the symptoms and all of that stuff. That's good, good, solid yes. information. Yeah, also that, I think absolutely. one of the yes. things that's really important about uh, many of the subjects that uh, we discuss with you, uh, Dr. Liz, is that uh, people become more aware uh, of issues that, quite frankly, they didn't know exist. Uh, they may think that they are avoiding gluten for a particular reason or something else. And just to be able to ask, by the way, could this have anything to do with my thyroid? Because quite frankly, I don't know that more than a few percentage of people in our audience or any audience ever thinks about uh, uh, when they have something that's chronic that just doesn't seem to get taken care of. It might be one of the things that we happen to talk about, not in such depth that it's overwhelming because uh, it's doctor speak, it's medical speak, but and not right. so not so uh, um, dramatic as all of the ads that we see on TV. If there were a drug for it, people would ask about it all the time. Uh, right. right, exactly. So yeah. Absolutely. This is really, uh, we really appreciate the manner in which you bring this information. Uh, to you you know, before, uh, before we go, I want to, uh, something just crossed my mind, and that is, you mentioned that Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. Hmm. There are lots of autoimmune, autoimmune diseases, and right. I'm thinking of relatives who have ulcerative colitis. That's right. That's a, a autoimmune. So my question right. is, does Hashimoto's somehow coordinate or show up with, in conjunction with other autoimmune diseases? Absolutely, it can, and that has to be considered. So if people have a family history of autoimmune disorders or other immune autoimmune issues in themselves, and then they're having symptoms of hypothyroidism, if their TSH is okay or in the normal range, then that's the next step, is to ask for checking those antithyroid antibodies. The good news is that when it gets addressed, a lot of doctors won't check those levels on those antibodies because they're under the mistaken impression that there's nothing that can be done about it. And that's just not true. We've already talked about removing dairy, soy, gluten from what we eat. A lot of times people with autoimmune issues, including Hashimoto's thyroiditis, will feel better. Your symptoms will improve if you take those steps. Also, selenium is an easy supplement to get a hold of. Selenium helps calm down the immune system. It helps... I'm going to say educate the immune system to behave appropriately. It's not appropriate for our immune system to attack us. Right. So selenium is an easy way to get our immune system to behave correctly, to behave appropriately. And there's also a medication that's out there that's very, very well studied for a lot of autoimmune disorders that is called naltrexone in low dose. So it's referred to as low dose naltrexone. Definitely one that we'll spell out in the comments of the video so people yes. don't have to worry about that one. Yeah. But what's interesting is that now, you may have heard of naltrexone because it blocks opiate receptors and it's used to help people detox from narcotic addiction. That's in really high dose. Yeah, We're talking 
hundreds of milligrams. Low dose naltrexone might be one milligram, just to give you the comparison. And what that does is it helps the immune system, again, work appropriately. Lots of information about that, including a particular website that I send patients to. So we'll be sure to put that in the comments of the video. Good. Yeah, this is going to, this video is going to have a long list of Yes. Comments at the bottom. Details. Perfect. We'll do that. But we'll do good. that. You know, that's one of the things that I love about talking to you uh, on Celebrating Act Two, and that is that, um, first of all, it's fun to talk to you, but it's it's always good information, even if it's a little esoteric, like Hashimoto's. So this is terrific, and uh, I know we're helping a lot of people when we uh, when we do these videos. So thank you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.